Good evening. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to Grace Lutheran. I'm Pastor Lochran. I'm the senior pastor here at Grace. I've met and talked to everybody here, and you may be saying, well, why is he introducing himself? It's to say hi to the folks that are turning into us uh, virtually, or, or perhaps even watching us recorded at some point in time uh, during the upcoming week. So welcome. I'm glad that you're with us as well, too. Uh, congregation, I'd remind you that that gives us a double joyful duty today. Uh, not only are you here to receive God's grace through hearing his word about the forgiveness of your sins, uh, but you are also having the opportunity to uh, sing and respond so that others can uh, join with during the course of the week. And that's a great thing, isn't it? A couple of notes for you before we get started today. Uh, this week, uh, we have our third week of Advent. It's Godette, or Rejoice. So we'll be lighting that rose-colored candle uh, that's, that's on the Advent wreath when that time comes up in just a minute. Uh, and, and you'll hear some about that, too, during the message for today. It also is exactly two weeks from today to Christmas Day, if you can imagine that. So be mindful of our uh, upcoming uh, schedule of services. Uh, next weekend, of course, is regular, but during the week we have midweek service at 5.30. Uh, we'll have our little scholars, our little lambs we call them. Uh, they'll be bringing a Christmas message for us at 5.30. Uh, and then we'll have Advent lessons and carols at 7 o'clock. Uh, our Conter, Conter Hayden, has put together a very nice lessons and carols uh, service for that evening. So we'll look forward to that being led by our older scholars. A uh, couple other announcements. Uh, a couple people have asked me about this one. One of our dear members who would frequently attend this service, uh, Lynn Dawson, passed through death to life eternal last week, as many of you know. Uh, there will be a memorial service for Lynn next Saturday, <coughs> excuse me, at 2 o'clock at Anderson McQueen on 38th Avenue. So that's the one down near uh, Tyrone Mall. Uh, and certainly the public is invited to that. Anybody would be invited to that to help support Rich uh, at this particular time of need. That one also will be live streamed and recorded uh, I just don't know the particulars yet. I think by the middle of the week, you could call the church office uh, if you were wanting to watch that, and, and Aaron would have information for you. Finally, prayers are never meant to be announcements. That's always a difficult thing. All of a sudden, you go to pray for somebody it's, or something, uh, and it's somebody that everybody knows, and you hear a gasp, and that's what we're trying to avoid. So I did want you to know that Jennifer Tippett, our beloved uh, director of music, uh, spent the day in the hospital today. She's undergoing some medical testing. I don't really know any more than that, uh, but I wanted you to be aware of that when we went to pray for Jennifer, uh, that that was uh, the case at that particular point in the service. We will, of course, also um, keep the people in Kentucky in our prayers as the, there, was, there was a disastrous storm there yesterday. All right, enough of all of that. We're going to go ahead and sing Light One Candle and light our uh, Advent wreath and our candles as well too, uh, and that will be up on the screen for you.
please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Lord, you are favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. Restore us again, O God, of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Merciful Father, you sent your Son, the Messiah, whose arrival was heralded by John the Baptist. Through Jesus Christ, you have forgiven my iniquity and covered my sin. You destroyed my enemies of sin, death, and hell. Knowing that you defeated these great enemies, remind me that you will surely protect me from all other enemies. Continue to enlighten, sanctify, and keep me in the true faith. Shine upon this heart of mine and chase the shades of night away. Help me in the midst of my fears to trust solely in you. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The third, the third Sunday in Advent, the Old Testament reading comes as Zephaniah, the third chapter. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never fail you should never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at the time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcasts, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, and at that time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading comes out of the book of Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonables be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which passes surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter. The disciples of John reported all these things to him. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour, he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and on many who were blind, he bestowed sight. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in slough soft clothing behold those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts what then did you go out to see a prophet yes i tell you and more than a prophet this is he of whom it is written behold i send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you i tell you among those born of women none is greater than john yet the one who is least in the kingdom of god is greater than he. This is the gospel of the Lord.
for centuries, if not even more than a millennium. This weekend has held the designation of Gaudete, or rejoice, taken from the first words of the appointed introit, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Historically, it was the Sunday when the church introduced John the Baptist for the first time. While in these latter days, he's received a promotion of sorts, and we hear about his uh, preaching and teaching about the coming Christ for two weeks. Remember last week? How we heard that preaching with its full force aimed at driving people to a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. Beyond a doubt, John's preaching convicted people up to and including Herod the Tetrarch himself. But rather than repenting, Herod exercised his kingly prerogative to brush it aside, reproving the Baptist at first before adding this evil to all of the evil things that he had done up to and including an adulterous affair by locking up John in prison. John the Baptist and rejoicing hardly seem to go hand in hand, do they? And yet in the end, I think they do. So let's examine that for a bit and see if at the end of it all, you don't agree with me. As we begin then, it is exactly there in prison that we find John still, and not just for a week. You know, it's been a week for us. For him, it would have been many months, if not longer, between Luke chapter 1 and here. During that time, Jesus' fame had increased greatly, while John's star significantly decreased. Uh, Of course, the Baptist himself, being the last of a long line of Old Testament prophets, had foreseen that. Uh, And yet, we meet him today, and, and as we do, there seems to be some confusion and doubt in his actions and words. Listen closely to how our reading starts. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? Now, I've heard lots of explanations for this question. You've probably heard uh, lots of explanations yourself. And there's been a wide range to them. There's wondering if John the Baptist even knew who Jesus really was. Or, yes, he knew. He was just sending his disciples to test them. This, however, is a case where I think that simple assumptions like these miss the point. After all, the Bible has already answered the question about John's knowledge. That happened at his birth when his father, Zechariah, pronounced this blessing. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sin. Certainly this blessing and its meaning were drilled into John's head by his parents throughout his childhood. So much so that when he saw the adult Jesus coming towards him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John knew, and further still, John knew who Jesus was, not of his own doing, but as he himself once said, because he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is 
the Son of God. So absolutely, John the Baptist knew who Jesus was. The Christ. The Son of the living God. John knew Jesus as Peter did. As you do. As I do. And yet, like each of us, he had those moments when his faith flickered, struggled, and doubted. Never forget, and I'm going to remind you twice tonight, so never forget that it's the devil's way to attack each of us in our own moments of weakness. Remember how he did it with the Lord Jesus himself not long after John was put into temptation, into prison, tempting the Son of Man 40 days after his fasting in the wilderness. Even in that weakened condition, Jesus' faith did not falter, as at every turn he clung to God's word for help. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from God's mouth. That summarizes this episode. That's how the Lord fought back the devil's attacks. And therein set a pattern for us. So then as John the Baptist struggled there in prison, it should, have been, it should be noted that the worst part of his imprisonment was a disconnect from the person of Jesus. True word of what Jesus was doing had reached him. But what he heard seemed to contradict his life circumstance. What he heard differed from what he saw going on around him. Here was Jesus working all of these miracles... And there was his trusted servant locked up in a cell, marginalized and forsaken. How often have you felt like that? Have you ever felt like that? How often have you turned to God in a moment of misfortune, a time of financial hardship, a, a, a poor health diagnosis, the loss of a loved one, a, a, a fight, an argument, a dispute with some friends or co-workers and said, I've been faithful to you. Where are you, God? Like John, we all of us have our moments of doubt and questioning. Listen to what happened next and learn how Jesus combated those moments. Here's what it says. They, the disciples of John, said to Jesus, John the Baptist has sent us to you saying, are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? In that hour he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits and on many who were blind he bestowed sight. And he answered them, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Lepers are cleansed. And the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Interesting, don't you think? Isn't it interesting that John didn't go to John in person to settle his doubts or to release him from that cell? Again, clearly from the Bible, one can have faith in Jesus and still struggle with doubt. Remember Peter. Remember Thomas. And now, yes, remember John. I, I almost entitled this sermon 
doubting John, by the way. The devil, as I said before and promised to remind again, is a roaring lion who attacks and, attempt, and attempts to, weak, to uh, steal away believers in their weakest of moments. I love you. You need to be prepared for that. It's my job to prepare you for that. In fact, isn't it a part of the reason that you were led here by the Holy Spirit this night? For isn't it here in this divine service that you receive what John the Baptist did from Jesus? What word about how he fulfilled all of the Old Testament prophecies written about him. And so it is through that word that the Holy Spirit works to bring faith, to strengthen faith, and to calm doubts in times of need. In his son Jesus, the Father has taken away judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst tonight, according to his word of promise. Therefore, the devil's accusations against your sin have no bearing whatsoever on your standing before God. No matter what things may look like to your eyes. Always remember that sight is the easiest of the senses for Satan to deceive. For it was when Eve saw that she took and ate. So then what you see may never contradict what you hear from God's mouth. But Rather, what you see is informed and at times negated by that word. So that in Christ Jesus, the lame do walk, the deaf do hear, the dead are raised. And the poor have the good news preached to them just as it was written so long ago. Those who are not offended or scandalized by these contradictions are the very ones whose sight is restored. On another occasion, Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And again, he said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said that later saying, almost immediately after this incident, with John's disciples, recorded in the gospel for today. Beyond a doubt, Jesus' calming of John's doubts had a purpose because biblical history tells us exactly what was coming for the Baptist. How he soon would be martyred for faithfully preaching the truth. John needed the strength of faith that Jesus gave. For that moment. Dear friends in Christ. Always remember that God's thoughts are not our thoughts. And neither are his ways our ways. Further still, always remember that his ways always accomplish his purposes. And that his purposes always have your best interest at heart. You see, in the end, he knows the big picture. So much so that what might seem like a setback in him is always an advance. Take the death of Jesus on the cross as an example. That moment was the darkest hour ever, wasn't it? That's exactly how it's depicted for us in the scripture. From noon to three, darkness fell over the land. And then the eternal Son of God breathed his last 
and gave over his spirit. And yet then and there, what happened? Graves were thrown open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. I, I wonder if John the Baptist was one of them. Have you ever thought about that? Regardless, in Jesus, all of the promises of God find their yes. Therefore, just as the Lord conquered death by rising again on the third day, so he shall come again in glory to resurrect you. Indeed, just as he promised, lo, I am with you always at his ascension, so he comes to you today in word and soon in the communion meal to bring faith, to strengthen faith, and yes, to compel it, and more than that, defeat all of those doubts that plague you in this life. By this coming, he prepares you for the life of the world to come where there will be no more doubting. And are you ready for this? No more sinning either. There, it will be an eternity of Gaudete. That is to say, forever rejoicing. No wonder God's New Testament people at all times and in all places were led to pray, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Praise be his holy name forever. Amen. Please stand now, waiting for the Lord's coming, and join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Please be seated for the prayers of the church. And as I told you in our announcements earlier in our prayers this evening, uh, besides those who are listed on our prayer page, which you could pick up as you leave today, uh, we include Jennifer Tippett. Uh, we also include the people in Kentucky and other places that suffered loss of life or prop uh, family members or property um, from yesterday's storms. And then finally, for uh, the family of Caitlin Wilkerson, who passed through death to life eternal this past week as well. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Heavenly Father, you rescue the daughter of Zion from her enemies and take away the judgments against her. Look with compassion upon your people wherever they suffer for the name of Jesus. Give them wisdom when they are pressured to compromise. Provide when they suffer loss. Give courage when they are afraid and strengthen them in the midst of persecution until you deliver them. 
preserve them always in the joyful hope that you will restore all that is lost with what cannot be taken away. Grant wisdom to the leaders of our land and safety to those who serve in the armed forces and as first responders, Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, as you once sent messengers before the face of Jesus to prepare his way, so strengthen and encourage all pastors and church workers as they make known his saving name, Be especially with all of us who serve here at Grace during the coming weeks as we lead the people of God in this place to the joy of celebrating our Savior's coming. Open the ears of all who hear to rejoice, repent, and firmly believe. Lord, in your mercy. O giver of all good gifts, look upon the households of your people. Provide the companionship for those who are alone. Strike in the bonds of marriage and equip parents to raise their children in love and faith. Grant that our homes may be places of joy, reasonableness, peace, and prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you set the prisoners free. Remember those who are incarcerated justly and grant that they might repent. Be freed from the clutches of sin. Accept the consequences of their wrongdoing and learn to live honestly and peacefully. Remember all those who are imprisoned unjustly. Restore their freedom according to your will and preserve them in your grace and the confidence that you know what is true and just. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your Son became flesh and healed the sick of all kinds of diseases and afflictions, demonstrating his power and giving us a foretaste of the resurrection on the last day. Have mercy upon all those in need of deliverance, especially Beth, Kathy, Judy, Philip, Justine, Diana, Joel, Steve, Joan, Gloria, Joe, Gail, Jennifer, Jan, Anna Lynn, Renee, Doug, Brenda, Carl, Dennis, Keith, John, Cindy, Philip, Pat, David, Monica, Joyce, Paula, Gary, Jay, Dave, Dennis, Clarence, Mike, Adrian, Caden, Paul, Heidi, Paul, Colleen, the Dawson and Wilkerson families, those who are suffering from loss of property or loss of a loved one in Kentucky from the recent storms. Heal them in your time and according to your will and preserve them in confidence that you will deliver your people from all afflictions at the resurrection of all flesh. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, the Son of Man came eating and drinking with sinners that he might proclaim the kingdom and welcome them in by the forgiveness of sins as he hosts his supper this night for his repentant people. Grant those who partake of his body and blood to be worthy and well prepared, firmly believing the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Just a reminder uh, that our offering plates remain up front. So if you've brought offerings with you tonight, please feel free to bring those up with you. A few weeks ago, we appealed uh, for funds for my account that helps people uh, during this time of the year especially. I wanted to personally thank you for an unbelievable response to that appeal. God bless all of you. Uh, for that, whether you whether you were able to give or you continue to pray for those in need, uh, it's greatly appreciated, and we'll be able to help and have already helped a significant number out. At this time, I'll invite you to stand as we sing the doxology.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we love and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... and teach us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after they had supped. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We greet one another with the Lord's peace.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will strengthen and keep you steadfast in the truth, faith, to life everlasting. Go in peace. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us ever joyful and firm in the faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and gracefully serve the Lord.